Hey guys, as you can see, I am surrounded by Mac OS. Now, if you follow me on this YouTube channel, that might be a little bit of a surprise because since the 90s, I have mostly used Windows. But I don't hate Apple and I don't hate Mac OS. In fact, I had a 27 inch iMac for seven or eight years and it was my main computer. That's how I actually edited videos on YouTube originally. And then at night time, I would switch back to Windows on a laptop. And that was my setup for many years, Mac OS and Windows. And I switched between both platforms. And it's very easy to do that because I chose cross-platform apps. But for the last four or five years, I've been using Windows on my PCs and on my laptops. I've not been going near Apple. But I do still like Apple and I do still like Mac OS. And that's why I've got a few MacBooks here, and that's why I've got Mac OS around me. Now, if you follow me, you might be wondering why I've got a MacBook. Well, on Friday, I made a very quick, I'm not gonna say rash, but a very quick decision to do a four month programming course, but 800 hours over 16 weeks. And that is what I'm going to be doing over the next four months. And to do that course, you needed a MacBook. Now, some of you watch this channel might just think of review tech, but I've worked online for 20 odd years and 20 years ago I actually did a postgrad in software development but despite the fact I enjoyed programming my career didn't go in that it just didn't go in that direction because of lack of job opportunities at that time so today I it was my first day on the course and I didn't have a MacBook so tonight I went out and I bought this MacBook Air and yeah very happy with it I was going to buy this new you know, it's like 900 pounds new for the 2020 M1 version, which is what this one is. But I saw it used come up, this particular model. It was used and it was 750. So I've saved a little bit of money, which is something I wanted to do because the M2 version of this is, you know, supposedly out in a few weeks. So I wanted to save money. This other MacBook here, well, this isn't mine. This is my wife's and this is something she was given by her work. So I didn't want to rely on this MacBook for the course because well, I didn't want to be in a situation where I dropped it, I scratched it, anything like that. Yeah, I just didn't want to go near it. But that is also an M1 MacBook, but it's the MacBook Pro, the one with the touch bar, the one that has since been replaced with the 14 inch. But you can also see the Dell in the background here and it has just switched off. But you might be curious as to why Adele is in this mix, and you might be curious as to why this is running Mac X, uh, Mac OS. You might be wondering why it's doing that or how it's doing that. Now, the first thing that I, I think a lot of you will see is it's a Hackintosh. It's not. This is not a Hackintosh. I've not hacked the Dell. Last night, I just didn't get time to buy that MacBook, and I was in a situation where I needed to access Mac OS today. So what I did instead was deploy an instance of Mac OS. Now, long term, I think it's for most people, if you're working in development, if you're doing programming, if you need a MacBook, it makes more sense to go out there, buy a cheap old MacBook and use that instead. But there are many situations where it just pays to just use a Mac OS temporarily online. Now, there's a lot of companies that do this. And you may be familiar with this in the Windows and in Linux world. Most hosting companies allow you to just deploy Windows or deploy Linux. And what they're doing is just, you know, basically just setting up the operating system on their servers. But because of Apple, because of their rules, because of the licensing laws or strict laws, you can't do that. So what a lot of companies do instead is get Mac Minis or Mac Pros and they simply host it for you. And when you, when you deploy an instance of a Mac OS, effectively what you're doing is just renting that uh, computer for a while. And then when you say you don't need to use it, well, they'll just scrub it and they'll set it up for someone else. Now, there's a lot of companies that offer this. Even Amazon offers this, uh, offers this now through Amazon AWS. There were some companies that was like $25 a month. There was some companies that was like 80 or 100 or $200 a month. The company that I went for was called Scaleway and it worked out about, you know, two pounds a day, two euros 40 a day, which in my situation was very 
you know, very easy for me to say, yes, let's do it. That's cheap. It's going to save me a lot of hassle that, you know, I don't have to run out and buy a MacBook. I don't have to spend two days setting up a Hackintosh. In a few minutes, I was able to set it up. And effectively what happens is, you know, you sign up, you create your account, you validate your account with your identity and all that. And then they will set up the Mac for you, the mini Mac for you. That's what they set up for me. Now, once it's set up, then you, you need to figure out how you access it. And obviously, mine, you know, the computer is not here. It's external. Mine was actually in Paris, France. And if I, I'm using the wrong mouse here. Um, so what you can do is access it remotely. Now, if I jump to my overhead camera and I zoom down, which I didn't do before, uh, if you zoom down, you can see that my screen probably needs um, cleaned, but you should be able to see here what it looks like. Now, for those of you who, um, for those of you who have used TeamViewer before, yes, that is what I'm using, but that's not what they recommended initially. If I come out of this for a second, um, come out of full screen, what they actually recommended was to use uh, a VNC, right? Now, I used a VNC viewer. I would not recommend using VNC. VNC is super sluggish. It's just an absolute pain to use, and you'll see like your mouse moving around very, very slowly. And if I actually show you what I'm trying to show you by clicking here, you'll see what I mean. Now, this is this is VNC. This is what they said you should maybe try to use. It works. It does work. It's just really sluggish, and it, it's sluggish to the point that it will annoy you. Now, thankfully, there are some other solutions. They also recommend Jump Desktop, but the one that I used is TeamViewer. I'm sure you're all aware of it, um, and this is TeamViewer. Now, on the surface, it looks the same as VNC, but what it's actually doing here, it, well, firstly, it gives me a lot more options as far as what I can do. I can, you know, I can remove the wallpaper, for example. If that's causing an issue, I can optimize it for quality or for speed. Uh, and if you optimize it for speed, then you'll maybe see the graphic, you can see the background changing a little bit. But this, this is TeamViewer. You know, this is my Dell... Just again, I'll jump back to my overhead camera. This, this is not a Hackintosh. This is not remotely connected to any MacBook here. This is a remote instance of Mac OS hosted in Paris, in France. And I'm simply connecting it to it remotely. And you can use so many different applications to do that, you know, to, to connect remotely. I do like TeamViewer just because it's idiot friendly and that's good for me. Um, but there's a lot of other solutions that you can use. And like I was saying, you know, if, if you do need a Mac for development, if you do, do need a Mac for any kind of length of time over a, a couple of months, it does make more sense to just go out and buy a Mac. But there's many situations for developers and for other people, they only need to use a Mac for a few hours. And it just doesn't make any sense to get the hardware. Or maybe they're not in a position where they can buy the hardware. And that's where this comes in, where you deploy a remote instance and, well, this is what you get. And... I was saying that VNC is sluggish. I've not found this to be sluggish. I've found this to be, um, well, very easy to use. Uh, and yeah, you know, there's a terminal. I am um, oh, um, typing a message to myself. So I'm not sure if it's coming through here, but I'm not noticing any kind of lag here from the connection. Granted, I've got a good internet speed here and the hosting company does as well. In VNC, there might have been a slight, you know, millisecond um, delay there. But yes, this is a practical solution. This is a, a really practical solution, in my opinion. And like I said, the company that I was using was Scaleway, but there's lots of companies out there. Go online. If this is something you think you, you could do, perhaps you want to just only try Mac OS before you buy it, then search for rent a Mac cloud or rent mac os online or something like that and you'll see a ton of companies that come up that offer this um that offer this service of remotely hosting a mac os now like i was saying i was i've paid you pay by the hour it's like 10 euro cents per hour and you have to keep it for 24 hours with the uh, scaleway but after that you can just simply eliminate that you can destroy that instance whenever you want so say for example you use this this remote instance for two days, you install your apps, you test everything. After two days, you go, right, I'm done. 
and you just destroy the instance and then that's it you're only charged for those two days or you're actually charged by the hour so you're not you know even going to get to two days sometimes so yeah i just thought i would share this because i know it's not a tutorial as to how you set this uh, set this up and the reason is it's very easy to set up if you just follow the instructions from the company and yes this is not something i'm going to be using long term but this is but it's great to know that things like that are available. There might be a situation in the future where I have to use a Mac OS for a review, for a tutorial, for anything. And if I've got a Windows laptop, I know that I can spin up a Mac OS instance remotely, connect it, do what I need to do. And yes, it might cost me a few dollars, but that's still going to allow me to do what I need to do. And it's a lot better than running out, buying a computer and then selling it, selling it later. I will talk about this MacBook Air more in the future. Um, I'd like to use it a little bit before I talk about it. First impressions are awesome. Really well made, gorgeous screen. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a Mac, it, it works well. No complaints there. I will talk about this in the future, but thanks again, guys, for watching. And I'll keep you updated with how my programming course goes in the future. Obviously, I'll be publishing, you know, a few less videos because of it. But it's going to be fun. So thanks for watching, guys. I am now in the world of Mac still on Windows, but I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do leave a comment as always, and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.